o'clock in the morning or good afternoon, we're kind of like noonish, so what do you say? Um, it's amazing how when you get on stage, you have to use the bathroom. <laughs> really? And I just went, so it's... And I also had a few friends of mine that are here, and I'm very grateful. Uh, they know that I had a rough morning. I'm still half... Okay, I'm half awake at this moment, before I was half asleep, which is a good thing, because if I freeze and I have a panic attack, that means I woke up and I realize that I'm speaking in front of a hundred something people. I'm not the best public speaker, so bear with me. Um, so I enjoyed our coffee and I really needed a second cup of coffee today. And I had a pleasure meeting a few of you and thank you for coming. And uh, since we were talking about risk today, I want you all to have a round of applause for Marina for taking a big <laughs> risk. Because, you know, who would have thought, right? Ted? Nicosia, I mean, Ted Cyprus, because I'm not from Nicosia, so, you know, I'm proud not to be from Nicosia, and please don't kill me. Uh, I'm from Limassol, and I enjoy it. I know there's some of you out there. <laughs> and um, I know there's this thing going on that, oh, I'm not supposed to leave this circle, by the way. This is this thing going on how uh, we're such a small island but we all have to stand from the town we, we come from. There's this pride, right? So if you're from Nicosia, you don't like Limassol. And you're from Limassol, you don't like Nicosia. And ironically, most of you that are here today that are not from Nicosia, one way or the other, you come to this city every day. If it's not every day, it's once a week, it's once a month, it's for business. And at the end of the day, we're all from the same place and we're all, we all have the same DNA, which is Cypriots whatever that is, which is a different debate, and we're not going to talk about it today. <laughs> but meeting of you, some of you out there, uh, today on the break and this morning, I heard this one question, which I hate. And I'm very sorry if I was rude to any of you while, you know, we're having coffee outside. There's this question that I don't like that when people ask me, because I feel like they put me in a frame and they stereotype what, who it is that I am. And that question is, what is it that you do? What do you mean, what do I do? I know they're asking me what my profession is, and they expect a normal answer. The funny thing is if I actually answer what it is that I do, which is I'm a film producer, people still look at me like, and what is that? Because nobody knows. I mean, how many of you know? But what I don't like about that question is that before you even get to know anybody, be before you understand who they are and where they come from, you have to put them in a category. And depending on that answer, you get a reaction, which that's the funny thing. If you sit back and watch people do that, so you have a lady, let's say, or me, and say, so what is it that you do? And then you get an answer like, oh, well, I am a brain surgeon. You know, her eyes lit up, and they're like, oh, you know, you must be a wonderful person. And if, you know, he's young and available, and she has a daughter, then, oh, you gotta meet my daughter, she's so lovely. But if your answer is, well, honestly, I'm a pig farmer, I don't think she'll give him the time of the day. Now, how do you know that the brain surgeon is not actually an alcoholic junkie? And how do you know that the pig farmer is not rich, has traveled the world, and one day he just said, you know what? I'm done. I'm done making money. I'm done. I've done everything I wanted to do, and I want to have a pig farm. And that's a vision. I know it's strange, but hey, I was, I was having dinner the other day with two guys who are actually American, and one of them goes to me, you know, when I'm done making films and, 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 and I make all the money that I want, I want to be a farmer, I want to I milk cows. And there's a guy from New York that lives in a little closet in Manhattan. So that says a lot about people. So back to what happened to me before, I got annoyed because I have to answer to that question, which defines me but I'm not what I do. Now, what I do is a part of me. What we all do is a part of us. And we all have, and I know a lot of you that are here today, um, that we seem to become what we do. We seem to become our work. I'm not. So I gave one answer out of the many that I was out there, and I said, well, I am a mother. And in the free time that I have, I produce films. So that's it, what I do, for now. Because in five years, I might be a photographer, or am I still, I would, but I will always be a mother, which is a new thing to me. And I want to see hands if there's any parents out here today. Okay, 
There's a good 20%. <laughs> Any parents-to-be? How many of you want to have kids? All right, good. Now, I've got to tell you one thing. Uh, my job is very intense, very tense, and I have a few filmmakers in here, and they know what I mean. Um, and, and being on the production side, it means that I'm constantly on the phone, I'm constantly on the run, I'm never home. I work out of home, I'm an independent, I'm a freelancer, which means, you know, I don't get sick day, I do not get vacation pay, I don't get any of that. So I know what intense feels like. But when I had a baby, and I, I gotta make sure that you guys know I'm not here to talk about that, and you, you know where I'm getting to. When I had a baby, it was the first time in my life, I felt that, oh my God. And I was ready, I was really ready, because I read every book, I went online, I signed up on every forum. You know those little mommy forums and the daddy forum? I did it. I was a member and I was getting the emails, and I was tweeting, and then I found my was actually a girl here today that I think she's here. We met at IKEA because we were exchanging stroller ideas. Oh, I like your stroller. Really, I like yours. And she's here, so thank you, Terry, for being here. Um, but nothing, nothing prepared me. And I've done a lot of extreme things in my life. I've, I've moved to the other side of the world, came back, moved again, came back, changed career paths twice. Um, I've been in gunpoint. I've been holding a gun in front of me while filming, and I said, hey, hey, hey big deal. And I didn't, it didn't face me. But when I went home the first night, and the baby started crying, I was standing on top of him, and I said, oh my God, oh my God, what if I can't do it? What if I'm horrible at this? And this is the first time in my life I actually asked myself if I'm good at something, because for some reason, once I chose a career path, I knew I was going to be good at it. It's a personality trait. My parents call me that, well, my mom actually, not my parents. My mom tells me that I'm as stubborn as a goat, and I just tell her, no, I'm just, you know, just me, you know. It's no such thing. It's, you know, I just push things, and I want things to happen. So I didn't think about this. I didn't think about whether I could do it or not. I said, yeah, why not? Everybody does it. Everybody has kids. I really want to have one, so I can do it. But it dawned on me that there is this possibility that I can fail. And that day was the scariest day of my life. The scariest day of my life. Because when you, when you fail at work, you'll figure out a way of getting back. When you fail at your marriage, you'll probably meet somebody else. When you fail, for, when you fail yourself, you'll find a way to succeed again. But when you fail as a parent, then what? You know, you're responsible for somebody else's life. So I realized that all this talk about your life changing when you, you're a parent is all BS, because it's not your life that changes, it's you. You change. Because up until that moment, I lived for myself. I'm surprised I was still married, to tell you the truth, and the guy never walked out on me, because all I did was work. Work, work, work. And I'm a workaholic, and I'll admit it, I, I'm addicted to my work, I'm addicted into working. I could be changing career paths, but I'm still addicted to it. So in that sense, all of a sudden I had to do all this. I had to stop and realize who I am. Know who I made myself to be, and who other people think I am. For example, my friend Christo was here at the audience that I've known since high school. When we were outside this morning, he asked me how I'm feeling, and I said, I don't know, I'm stressed. And he said, that's not the Maria I know. That's what you said. And because he has a perception of me of being strong and independent and fearless, which I was. I was very fearless, especially when he knew me in high school. But uh, I'm not really that person. That's what I let people see. Deep inside, when I'm home alone, I'm a normal woman that are PMSs. <laughs> and cries over stupid movies, especially if it's Disney and Pixar, <laughs> that um, craves chocolate once a month, <laughs> that is scared of middle light crisis because it does happen to women, and I'm almost five years away from it, so it, it is scary. And I don't know what's going to happen to me. I don't know. Maybe I'll move to, uh, I don't know, Japan and become, I don't know, learn how to make tea. But um, 
I had to realize, and within that realization, I realized that it's not the first time that you do that. It's just, it was for me, it was, okay, I, I gotta make myself, it was the first time I realized that I'm realizing who I am. Because obviously I've done it before. When I decided I wanted to travel the world, it was a realization that I have that need as a person. When I decided my career path, when I decided to leave New York, which I got that, what? You know, and when, when I had to tell people that I decided to leave my corporate job and, you know, uh, endure in the freelancing and take all those risks that most people do when they leave a secure job, it was within inside that I said, this is not who I am. I need to be the true me. So I had to do that, and in that you rediscover your true self. Now, the little extra you get when you're a parent is that you find your inner child. And it's lost, and I'm telling you, we all forgot how it is to be not just children. You just go back to your early 20s when you're in college, and you had all those dreams, and you think you're unstoppable because you, know, you have parents providing for you, so you don't have to worry about money, really, and you think you can do anything. And it comes to the point that you want to let your child know that, that he can do anything too. That's very important to me. I need him to know that he can do anything. So I had to rediscover that feeling inside of me because it was lost. Uh, one of our speakers was talking about borders in our minds before, and that's exactly what happens as we grow older, especially when something like this happens. And especially living in Cyprus, like I said, people argue about which town is better. We're not even cities, we're talking about towns now. So, um, and then I had to redefine my life. The, the, the hardest part, and why send having kids is, is, is intense, is when you have a child, you don't just raise your child, you raise yourself. You actually grow, and you have to teach yourself again and again new things, and you have to always remember what it is that you do. Now, I'm not saying that you have to be parents to, feel, to go through what I went through. I think that you all have, and you will be faced with a, a life-altering situation, like you want to buy a house, you want to propose to somebody, you want to get a divorce, you want to change your career. And we all have to ask this one question. Is this what I really want? And in order to do that, you need to know what you want. And a lot of us don't know what we want. We know what we do not want. We do not want to be miserable, we do not want to be poor, we do not want to be simple. Everybody wants to be somebody, everybody wants to be unique. So there's this line, sometimes knowing what you don't want will guide you and find what you want, but I, I feel like it, it, you get lost sometimes in, in transition. Now, this is what I had, that's the stubbornness I was telling you before, Every time I wanted something, since I was like two years old, and somebody told me, well, no, you can't have that, which seems to be quite a way of living here, not just in Cyprus, but in all small societies. And I'm sure you all had maybe an electrician coming to your house and say, you know, I, well, I really want that light over there. Like, no, you can't. Why? Well, you, you can't. What do you mean I can't? Why? People do not give you reasons. They don't look into things in a spherical way. They just decide the easy way, which is negative, and no, you can't have it. And that's me. I'm the why not girl. Why not? You know, <laughs> really spoiled. Why not? And I can sit here and argue with you, and I have had many conversations with friends, and it was very frustrating, because to me, when you say why not, you need to also explain, all right, I want to quit my job and go to the North Pole for a year. Why not? Well, you know, I don't have the money, so save money. Well, you know, how about my wife? Explain it to her. Well, how about my kids and the financial security? Make a, make a plan. Take a loan. Schedule. Make a plan. And, and we can go on and on and on, and I keep saying, why not, until you say, yeah, you're right. So, in other words, what happened to me, and the, why, the reason I freaked out is, I never asked myself whether I could do this or not, whether I can be a mother and have this insane career that I had. And one day, I got a phone call. I was about seven months pregnant, and that's not my belly, by the way. <laughs> seven months pregnant, I get a phone call for a job. I got offered a job, and I was very honored. It was a great documentary, and I really wanted to do it. But um, it turned out that the, the timing was off. 
it, the project would start when I was about to give birth. So I had to reject it very nicely. And I said, oh, you know, I'm going to give birth in September. And the guy, you know, you know, what do you expect? You expect somebody to go, oh my God, congratulations. And that's what I was expecting. And I'm already smiling before I hear the answer. And I get this, oh, well, there goes your career. <laughs> I, I, I was, uh, seriously, for five minutes, I was like, really? I do not remember what I told the guy. I'm sure it was nasty, because he never called me for another job. <laughs> but a year later, when I actually decided to go back to work, because I took a very long break, and trust me, when you're on a break, everything seems possible. So I thought, yeah, I have this balancing thing figured out. But it's kind of ironic because I wasn't working, so how did I have it figured out? It was just, you know, sitting on my ass all day. But um, one, the, when the day came and I had to go back to work and I had to mingle everything, I went back to what I knew. So I started working the same way I've been working for the past eight months. And then I realized that I couldn't have it all. There was no way, and it doesn't matter if you're a mother, or a father, and it doesn't matter if you're a woman or a guy, it has nothing to do with that. It's about the fact that your life has changed. And it's about the fact that your emotional world has changed. And at that point, I lost control. And that was the first time in my life that I had lost control, which is a very scary thing. And I remember I was driving home from work, from a film shoot, and I started crying on the highway because I thought I had failed. I have failed myself, and I have failed in my career. And it, I was also crying because he was right. And I hated when other people are right and I'm wrong. I thought that, yeah, I had to throw away my career, that I worked really hard to reinvent here in Cyprus because I decided to be a mother. So in that sense, I asked myself, was it a risk? Was becoming a mother and having a career a huge risk? Thinking about that, I realized that I've taken many risks in my life. I just never, I never accepted myself as a risk taker because being fearless, you know that teenage feeling that you would just get on a bike and your parents don't let you be on a motorcycle and you just feel the thrill? That's how I've been all my life. So I would skip the road and just see the destination. I would just say, oh yeah, I really want to go there, I'm going to get there. And I never stopped in that process, in the way, to see, you know, what am I doing, and maybe I'm wrong. And because I'm running out of time, and I guess I got carried away, um, I'm going to talk to you about this before I get off. This is how I survived. This is how my sanity survived, and how I survived all these years. Taking the risk out of the risk requires to take what scares you the most, and face your fear, but in a logical way. Make a plan. This guy that said this is blind and has run in the desert 140 miles, and he's blind. So if he can do it, why can you not? Do what you want. What scares us every day, all you have to say, well, if I'm afraid to change my jobs, what's the worst that can happen? Once you say that, you have to plan your failure. It's like putting cushion when you're jumping. So when you put cushion when you jump, it won't hurt so much, it will still hurt. But you prepare, you're gonna plan for it, you're gonna take a loan, you're gonna talk to your wife, your kids will understand, they'll be proud of you so you can go to the North Pole and come back. So you have to remember, and I had to remind myself, and I am reminding myself every day that yes, I can do what I wanna do. I can find the balance. You just have to tweak and change just a little bit what your dream is and what you think your career, if that's your dream, because mine was my career, is. Career doesn't mean I have to work 20 hours a day. Career does not mean, and happiness does not mean that I have to kill myself. So somebody will think of me when I tell them that I'm a film producer, that I'm successful. To make careers what makes me happy and gives me special moments in my life. So if you think of our life as a, as a road, as a forest, and, somebody, and your dream is to plan the perfect road from point A to point B. And you don't want to cut down any trees, and you don't want to have a curvy road. That's almost impossible. But if you give in a little bit, and you cut a tree or two, and you put a curve or two, 
you have a perfect road and a very beautiful one. So to be alive and manage life, we have to take risks. And I'm not talking about jumping out of planes, maybe some of you do it, and, and bravo, but <laughs> I would never. But the little things, the little things in life that are risky, even being here today on this stage, for a lot of us is a risk. So all the speakers here are here risking their reputation, let's say, or their self-esteem by doing it. You guys taking the day off to come here was a risk because you don't know if your boss will understand. There's a lot of little things in life. But if you take it, the risk out of the risk, if you're stop being afraid of it anymore and you plan it out, whether that's motherhood or a divorce, whether it's a career change, or just going for coffee because you never have coffee in your life, it will make it easier. Failure is okay, as long as you are ready for it, and the worst thing that can happen is never as bad as you thought. Thank you.